<laughs> okay. Hello, New Jersey students, parents, and counselors. Thank you for attending our virtual college exploration this evening for our Ohio Wesleyan. Uh, just a, a few little housekeeping rules. Uh, you can only ask a question by typing it into the Q&A button. Uh, you will not, your camera's not available, your microphones are off. Um, then in order to look at other sessions from other colleges and universities, please feel free to go to njacac.org slash virtual fair. And you can not only sign up for more sessions, but in a short time, there will be videos from other universities and colleges that perhaps you wanted to investigate but didn't have time to. So I, now I'm going to turn it over to Ohio Wesleyan. I will stop sharing my screen and you can share yours, okay? Okay. Okay, stop. Wait a minute. Where's the stop share? Well, you're not sharing right now. Okay, good. Then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And can we see how many students are in? We can't see their names, Susan, but can we see how many students are participating? Well, right now it says there's four people in the webinar, and that may okay, include gotcha, you I and see. me. So. I got gotcha. you. Well, welcome. Uh, my, my name is Dave Froman. I'm Associate Director of Admission at uh, Ohio Wesleyan and the representative for New Jersey. I'll, I'll give a little further uh, explanation and description of myself in a moment. Uh, at least if you can just do a quick in introduction and then uh, we'll go a little more in depth. I'll go a little more in depth and give you the opportunity as well. Sure. So it looks like we just have Rebecca with us today. So hi, Rebecca. Um, my name is Elise Donnell. I graduated in 2016. I'm currently working on my classes five-year reunion committee, which is nuts. Um, <laughs> while at Ohio Wesleyan, I studied um, accounting uh, was my major, and um, I was a member of Delta Gamma sorority, and I was also involved in a lot of other things on campus. I was actually a campus tour guide, and I have my, my tour guide <laughs> polo on right now, um, and uh, I was a member of the Student Homecoming Organization, um, or Spirit and Homecoming Organization, excuse me, which um, I believe has had an updated name change since then, but um, that's some of the stuff that I did on campus. Okay, thank you, Eilish. And I have to apologize uh, to our uh, Rebecca and anybody else who joins. Uh, we had a, a couple other people that were uh, part of the panel, and I think we've had a powerful panel with uh, Eilish and, uh, and, and, and me involved to the, tonight as well. But uh, one uh, suddenly came up for one, and the other one is ill. So uh, the panel of four became a panel of two, so just uh, FYI. A little more of my background. I actually am a regional representative. I live in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. For the first 28 years of my career, I was a men's basketball coach. I coached at Xavier University. I coached at Milan High School, which inspired the movie Hoosiers. And I was there for three years. And I went to Westminster College in Western Pennsylvania. And from there to Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And Carlisle, Pennsylvania is where uh, we have lived since well before uh, you were born, 19, uh, since 1989. And in 2002, I left coaching and went into uh, admissions and I was 14 years in admissions at Dickinson. And then it's kind of a long story, but uh, I ended up uh, leaving Dickinson and now I am a regional representative in my fourth year for Ohio Wesleyan. And obviously I'm the New Jersey representative, but I also covered New York. And actually I covered New York all the way down the coast to Virginia. So I have a wide swath of the Eastern United States, the Middle Atlantic as my regional territory. Uh, Ohio Wesleyan has been a great fit for me. I, I love the people, the uh, great programs, and I think it's a great place. And, and speaking of place, you, you well may know that we're located just uh, a little less than 30 minutes north of Columbus. Columbus now is the 14th largest city in the United States. And uh, it was kind of fun yesterday, I was doing a virtual visit with a school in uh, Delaware, the state. And I said, we are located in Delaware, but it's not Delaware, the state, it's Delaware, Ohio. So we're in Delaware, Ohio, just north of Columbus. And we're a smaller school between 1,400 and 1,500 students, but that means you have small classes. Average class size is around 15. 
So the faculty ratio is a little bit over 10 to 1. Um, and uh, while being a small school, we have a very large campus. I have pictures of the campus uh, behind me. And it's a 200 acre campus. So it's a very large campus. And I say there's nothing while you're on campus that has a particularly small feel to it on campus. And I really think too that the uh, town of Delaware, Ohio with 40,000 people is just a wonderful, wonderful college town. So as a matter of fact, I was speaking with a student from Washington DC who visited OWU, as we affectionately refer to ourselves, Ohio Wesleyan University, but visited OWU about three weeks ago. And he said, I loved campus, I loved the people, and I'll tell you, I was very impressed with Delaware, Ohio. And I'm always promoting Delaware, Ohio. And I, I asked him, I said, Graham, what did you like about Delaware, Ohio? What impressed you? He says, well, it's close and substantial. Three words, close and substantial. And close, so some people ask me, Dave, is there transportation into town from campus? And I say, yes, your feet. If you're heading west, you turn right. If you're heading east, you turn left. You walk about 50 steps and you're into the heart of downtown. The substantial part is once you get there, there is restaurant after restaurant. There is shop after shop. There's a nice theater, the Strand Theater is on one of the side streets. And there's just a lot of activity in town pretty much through the week. And even with COVID, maybe a little less, but places are open. I mean, places have not shut down. So it's an area that's really booming, really thriving, and there's just a good, good feel to it. So I, I, I do think it's a, it's a great, great college town. Um, I leash anything that uh, you, how, how about I leash, uh, I don't know if you mentioned uh, the high school from which you graduated and, and your college process. Can you, can you maybe say a little bit about that too? Sure. So um, Rebecca, I'm actually from Bergen County, New Jersey. Um, and I went to Indian Hills High School, graduated in 2012. And when I was looking at colleges, I had no idea what I wanted at all. Um, my dad was actually is an alumni of Ohio Wesleyan. And so he really encouraged me to visit it to check out what a small school felt like. Um, and on the same trip, we were also going to visit my cousin at Miami of Ohio, which is, a, you know, what I think they refer to as a medium sized school at 15,000, which is way, too, was way too big for me. Um, and then we were going to hit Penn State on the way back, which is about 45 to 50,000, depending on the year. Um, and so after visiting Miami, I realized that I, I wanted a small school. And initially I was really hesitant to like Ohio Wesleyan because my dad had gone there. Um, and, you know, typical, typical kid, I, I didn't want my parents to be right. So um, I fought really hard against liking it. But um, after my first trip to campus, I fell in love. Um, I absolutely loved the campus. I loved all the people. Um, one of the things that I vividly remember from my visit um, was that I was walking on the jaywalk, which is um, used to be a road that ran right through the middle of campus. And um, a number of years ago now, they actually paved that over. And so it's the connecting point between residential campus, which is on one side, and academic campus on the other. Um, and in the heart between the jaywalk, our, our student center and our library. So it's really at the heart of campus. Um, but I was walking down and I, you know, somebody stopped me to see how my visit had been going and being from northern New Jersey, I was a little bit taken aback, the fact that somebody was just stopping me to talk to me just because, um, but it was really nice and I just, I felt at home and I did a couple of other visits at some of the other um, smaller Ohio liberal arts schools like Kenyon and Denison and Worcester, um, but just really kept coming back to Ohio Wesleyan and I'm so, so happy that that is where I landed. Nice, nice. Uh, thank you. And uh, can you, uh, you know, I mentioned, and you, you said you like the campus and the area, but can you, uh, can you talk about you know, your impressions of, uh, of Delaware, of the, of the town, and maybe some of your favorite places to go there? <laughs> Sure. So um, I love Delaware. I actually lived at school um, for uh, three of the four summers that I was at school. Um, and I, I had a couple of jobs downtown. I worked at um, 
the wine bistro right on Sandusky Street. Um, and, you know, we really loved going to 1808. Um, it's where we would like celebrate some of our friends' birthdays. Um, it was, you know, one of the nicer restaurants in town. We also really liked Miserito, um, as well as uh, Typhoon. Um, mm. Coming from the East Coast, I really liked sushi and I really liked, you know, having access to fresh <laughs> seafood and fresh, fresh sushi. Um, and I wasn't expecting to have a good sushi shop in town. Um, so that was always a, a nice treat to be able to go to Typhoon. So I really like downtown Delaware. Um, you know, they do something called First Fridays. So on the first Friday of every month, there's like a little, you know, there's activities that are downtown. I, I you know, I don't live near Delaware right now. So um, I don't know what what that process looks like during COVID. Um, but, you know, it was really fun. There was, um, you know, local artists that would come through. Um, there was people in town that have old cars. They would line their cars up on Sandusky Street. And, you know, it was just a really fun place to be. Um, and like Dave said, you know, campus kind of sits perpendicular to town. So I would say that Ohio Wesleyan runs East to West and Sandusky Street, which is the main drag in Delaware, runs north to south. Um, so, you know, it's it's quite cool as you walk from residential side of campus to academic side of campus, you do sort of walk through town a little bit um, on the main drag. And, you know, it's, just, it's nice to be part of the community um, and you don't feel as though you're secluded whatsoever. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, Rebecca, if you have questions as we're going through this, uh, Feel free to put them into the uh, into the Q and A. I mean, we'll keep we'll keep talking and sharing information. But if you have some specific questions, uh, let us know. And by the way, after I finally figured out uh, who you are, Rebecca, uh, hello again. I haven't seen you since the fall of nineteen when you attended the. It, you did not. I don't think. I don't think Billy Lewis was there. He might have been. He's been at some of our receptions, but uh, you attended the reception at the. Lewis residence and Billy was uh, going to be uh, on the panel, but he uh, he fell ill, unfortunately. And I found out uh, from him earlier today that he was unable to uh, to, to make it. But uh, I, I know you have interest in uh, communication, or indicated anyway, and you might have other interests, but indicated interest in communication, film studies, and public relations. I just want to share something with you, uh, if I may. Um, here we go. So this you, you, uh, this is our, uh, what we call our travel brochure from, from last year. And I don't know if you saw this, I had, probably had copies of this with me at the uh, event at the Lewis House, but um, there are a couple of things that I would point out that are consistent with your, with your interests. And uh, one of them here, Alyssa Schuler, she, uh, she majored in business so with a focus on marketing, but you can see, so, I think you know, Rebecca, that we you have small classes, you have personal attention, but we, where we really hang our hat at Ohio Wesleyan at OWU is on the OWU connection. And that's all your out of class experiences. So we're talking internships, study abroad, travel learning, research, those types of things, which we say are your distinctive Ohio Wesleyan OWU, OWU experience. And what this is, is a panel which shows the majors of six of our recent graduates, where they ended up, and in between, when you follow the dotted lines, you can see their connection experiences that help them get to where they are now. So for Alyssa, again, a business major, you can see that she's got, she has an internship with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, she had an internship with Goodman Media International in New York, and this is Tom Goodman, one of our alumni, and that's Times Square in the background, and Alyssa was hired by Tom for an internship. You know, another internship, that's three internships for her so far, at the Clay Agency in Columbus. Uh, she went with the accounting fellows to uh, Washington, D.C. Did you know Alyssa, by the way, Alish? Did you know her? I did. You did? Okay. She was, I, yeah, I did. She was um, a sophomore when I was a senior. Okay, okay, great, great, great. But then she wrote a connection grant. You may be aware of this, Rebecca, but you can actually, if you have a project in mind and you need funding for the project, you can, you can write a connection grant 
submit it to the committee on campus, and if it's approved, if the grant proposal is approved, then you get up to full funding for whatever the project is. And so she got a grant to do research on accounting issues in the emerging cannabis industry. Then she got an inter internship at Spark Foundry in, uh, in Seattle and working on various accounts for them. And you can see now that she was hired by Spark uh, as a strategy associate at Spark Foundry in Seattle. And um, another thing that I think uh, relates to your interest in film studies most definitely, and I think this is one of the more intriguing tales of the ones listed here, is Olivia Baylor, class of 19, studio art major, worked in the archives at OWU. She did research with the head of the department. She wrote a grant that led to full funding for her to spend six weeks at UCLA's Film and Television Institute studying animation. Then she got an internship on campus with the communications department. All that this young lady is doing now, Olivia is getting her MFA in animation in Hollywood at UCLA in Los Angeles. So, some people say to me, Rebecca, wow, you must have a great animation program. We don't have an animation program. We have no animation program. But Olivia, as other students have done, was able to forge her path, again, with the small classes, the personal attention, and all the opportunities she had through the OWU connection. So I wanted to point out these, uh, these things to you, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you find those of, of interest. Um, Eilish, anything that you have to say about the OWU connection? I know that you had an overseas experience, but anything about your experience or any others? I do, and I, and I can talk about that, but I also see that Rebecca asked um, about the transition from New Jersey to Ohio, and if there yeah. was a bit of a culture shock from that perspective. A little bit. Um, I also grew up going to the Midwest every summer. My family vacations in Minnesota. Um, and so I had an affinity for the Midwest to begin with. Um, and then my dad being from Western Pennsylvania, you know, we would spend a lot of time in Pittsburgh. So that was kind of similar to Ohio. So it didn't feel like a huge culture shock for me personally. Um, a couple of my friends who were from the East Coast, you know, some of the things that they struggled with a little bit, and I mean, struggle in a very minimal sense, but, you know, being by the water, if you are, you know, anywhere, I, you know, I don't know where in New Jersey you're from, but it's pretty easy to get down to the shore and to spend some time by the water and Ohio is only a mock state. So that was definitely different for some people. Um, but you know, we do have within Delaware, there is um, a reservoir. Um, and so I know that a couple people would go down and rent a boat and, you know, paddle along the reservoir and, you know, that you could go um, and, and sit and at the, at the lake there. Um, and so, you know, if you are a water person, it's not like you can ever get water. The other thing is generally the Midwest is just lower than the Northeast. Um, you will feel like you're going a million miles a minute. Um, the good news is, is that there are a lot of transplants at Ohio Wesleyan. I know that when I was there, about 50% of the student population was from Ohio, but the other primary poll of students was from the East Coast. So you're definitely not alone. You have a lot of other people that are in a similar, in similar shoes. Um, I actually, um, one of the, there was a student a year above me who we went to high school together. Um, so, so, you know, it was nice to have a familiar face, um, even though we, we didn't necessarily run in the same social circle or were involved in, in similar activities on campus. Um, you know, but it, those are two of the things that I would say are the major differences that people struggled with is just, you know, if you're a big water person being from the East Coast, Ohio is landlocked. Um, and also depending on the way that you drive to campus, from the airport. I don't know if you've ever been or had a visit to campus, but if you drive up 71, you will drive through a substantial amount of cornfields and then all of a sudden Delaware just kind of pops up out of nowhere. Um, but I promise you, you are in a like large town of Delaware. You are not among the cornfields. Um, so that was definitely a culture shock for, for some of my friends. Um, but I mean, that that's kind of it. Uh, you know, Ohio Wesleyan being a small liberal arts school, you're going to have 
um, a lot of liberal thought and, and discussion about things. Um, so, you know, I, I do know that just in, in the times that we are in, um, in the, the polarization of everything, sometimes that can be a little bit challenging. Um, so, you know, you're, you're not, I don't think you're walking into something that you wouldn't be prepared for whatsoever. So um, that, that's kind of my point on the cultural differences. You know, you know, I also would like to point out, uh, Rebecca, so mo most of your peers, I may have said this to you before, but most of your peers f from Allentown High School will go to school either in New Jersey, or if not New Jersey, somewhere up and down the East Coast. Most of your peers will probably go to larger schools, Rutgers, Penn State, University of Maryland, University of Delaware, Northeastern, up in Boston, you know, wh wherever, but most will go to larger schools. There's nothing wrong with larger, there's nothing wrong with up and down the East Coast. But I, but I say to you, young lady, head west, head to Delaware, Ohio, like what I least said, you know, come someplace where the pace is a little slower, where it's a little more mellow, where you can breathe a little easier. You got that Midwest hospitality, uh, and then take advantage of our small classes, the personal attention, and all the benefits of the OWU connection. And, and you, Rebecca, in many ways, will be ahead of your peers who choose to go with the more familiar, who, to, who choose to follow the pack. And I get asked, not, not infrequently, what's the typical OWU student? You know, what are you looking for? What's the typical OWU student? I say, well, there's really no typical OWU student. There's no cookie cutter OWU student. You know, our students have very broad interests and, uh, I think they're very open, they're very welcoming, they're very friendly. Um, and again, the diversity of interest, I think, defines them in a way. But what I say that all of our students share is what I refer to as the entrepreneurial spirit. And that doesn't mean that you major in business. What, what, what that means, the entrepreneurial spirit means that you're willing to stretch yourself a little further. You're willing to take some risks. And uh, you're willing to push yourself maybe just a little bit further outside your comfort zone. And I would say that, as much as anything that I can pinpoint, defines a typical OWU student. In their own particular way, they have that entrepreneurial spirit. And even the idea of you coming from New Jersey to Ohio is an excellent expression of that spirit. And I think it puts you ahead. Um, Alicia, any thoughts on, and, and great, great question. Uh, you know, ask some more, Rebecca, if you have some more on your mind. But Alicia, anything as far as the uh, OWU connection, your experiences, other experiences? Yeah, so, you know, my experience with the OWU connection, I did a full semester abroad in Cork, Ireland at the University College of Cork, um, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, it was much more of a cultural and, um, you know, ex experiential thing for me. Um, so because I was an accounting major, the United States follows, because we do everything our own way, follows um, a specific accounting principle. Um, and so actually going to Ireland, they follow a completely different accounting principle. So no accounting classes that I was going to take in Ireland were going to transfer for credit. So I actually ended up taking exclusively, um, you know, some of my distribution credits um, or, or all of my um, other requirements that were needed to, to graduate. And so I took a lot of really interesting classes. Um, I took a, a humanities class that was basically looking at um, the Irish, um, the Irish tradition of manuscripts and, you know, the, the, making of the manuscript, the writing of the manuscript, Irish literature that was, you know, discovered in them. Um, I did a whole, whole course just on the history of the city of Cork. Um, I took a marketing class just because I thought it was interesting. Um, you know, so it was, it was a really great time to just kind of explore. And, you know, I had full support from my advisor, um, who was actually the head of the accounting department. Um, which I, I felt great about, you know, accounting is, is the major that that's pretty rigorous in terms of, you know, these are the classes that you have to take when, um, it, it just in order to graduate on time. And, you know, my, my advisor worked with me in order to 
sort of reorganize the way in which um, I was going to take those classes in order to do this study abroad trip. And so, you know, I, I am so, so thankful for that um, and to have that experience. Based on um, what Dave has actually shared with me and, and has shared here about your interests, what I think would definitely be of interest to you in terms of the O connection is our New York Arts Program. Um, and so, you know, you don't inherently need to be within the an art like department or, or fine arts in order to um, participate in this. I actually had a sorority sister who is two years younger than me, um, but she went to New York for a semester, which also from New Jersey probably seems a little weird to like say you're doing a semester abroad in New York, but I promise it's worth it. Um, Ohio Wesleyan actually owns a brownstone in New York in which you're put up for the semester. And my uh, sorority sister Alana actually had an internship with a production company and she was um, part of working on the production of a, you know, Netflix documentary. And so she is credited on Netflix um, for her assistance in that. Um, and, you know, she was a journalism major. She really wasn't sure what she wanted to do, but she had never been to New York and wanted the experience and really felt as though that was the right move for her. And, you know, it, it, she now works back on campus and, you know, she, she, her path was, you know, not necessarily what somebody might think of, um, but it was such an incredible experience for her. It opened so many doors um, and really got her interested in something she didn't know she was going to be interested in. So that was just something that based on your experience um, and, and your interest, I, I, you know, wanted to share that story as well. And I also see that you asked a question about COVID, which as an alumni, I'm not sure that I can answer. So I'm going to pass I, it I over to Dave. I can answer that, but you can answer the one about sorority, <laughs> about being in a sorority. Yes, I can. I can. You're right. Um, so I absolutely loved Greek life. Um, you know, one, one thing about Greek life on campus is that it's, or, um, specifically at Ohio Wesleyan, is that it's a, you know, you sense it, it's there, but it's not dominating in any way. Um, so there are five sororities and five fraternities on campus right now, and none of the sororities are residential. So I used to call them a glorified clubhouse. Um, other people were <laughs> maybe not didn't like that term, but you know, it was, I went to our sorority house to study. Um, I went to, you know, we had a kitchen in our house. So if we didn't want to eat on campus or if we wanted to do a special birthday dinner or something with friends, you know, we could go to the house and cook and it was just a nice little getaway um, to, to have that movie nights and stuff. Um, you know, I think it was an enhancement to my college experience, but I don't think that by not doing it that you lose anything. Um, you know, Greek life runs in my family and I um, actually, I mentioned that my dad went to Ohio Wesleyan, um, but also my aunt and she met her husband at Ohio Wesleyan as well. So, you know, they were all in Greek life and they all felt as though it enhanced their experience. So I just decided to, to kind of give it a try and I'm really glad I did. Um, you know, one of my best friends is my sorority big sister. I talk to her every single day. Um, but again, it's not because you don't live in a sorority house, you have a lot of options. Like I lived with women in different sororities for me. I lived with women who weren't in sororities at all. Um, and so, you know, your friend group is not just your sisters. It's, you know, it's really just an enhancement of everything else on campus. So, so that's what I'll, I'll say about that. Yeah, I think, and, that, and that's consistent with my uh, with my description. There's a very inclusive mentality at uh, OWU, and it uh, you know crosses over uh, you know the different groups, including uh, Greeks and Independents, most certainly. And it's about 28% of our student body now is uh, is in uh, Greek life. There are five sororities and uh, and five fraternities. As far as uh, Rebecca, that's a great question about uh, COVID. What uh, what we are doing is uh, Eighty-six percent of our students are on campus now, um, and obviously that means fourteen percent are not. So they have the option of going full virtual or being in person on campus. We also gave our faculty the option of uh, of, of teaching in person or going fully virtual. So twenty percent of our classes are virtual, and it's possible you'd be in, in on campus and be taking a or you know, one or more 
classes that uh, that are virtual. Our uh, our plan is, and we're just starting Thursday. We'll start. I think it's our seventh week of classes. It's at least seventh, maybe eighth. But I think it's the seventh week of classes. So the plan is to have classes uh, in person or virtual, but the ones that are in person will go on until the Tuesday through the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And then after Thanksgiving, we will have a week of virtual classes for everybody and then virtual finals. And then at a date that has not been officially announced yet, and when I say officially announced, I don't know what it is, but the uh, second semester will start sometime in January or February, but the course of second semester is uh, is to be determined. So that's that's what we're doing. Hopefully that answers your question. If you have any further questions about that, uh, you know, just just type them there into the into the Q and A. And um, I wanted to mention a couple other things that re relate to um, to the admissions decision for this particular round. And that is really two things. One's, one's related to admission and one's related to financial aid. But those two things are this. First of all, we are fully test optional now. We've been in the past test optional for students with a 3.0 GPA or higher, but now we are totally test optional. The other thing is that we used to have test scores attached to and part of the consideration for merit awards. That is no longer the case. We are just looking at GPA and we are awarding merit awards based on GPA. So for instance, we are about $60,000 a year is the, is the cost at Ohio Wesley. Our top merit award is the Branch Rickey Scholarship, which is $30,000 a year, and it is automatic. It's not like we gave out 200, we can't give out 201. It's not like this is going to committee. It is automatic for any student with a 3.6 or the equivalent or higher weighted GPA, 3.6 or higher, automatically will be awarded, if they're admitted, automatically awarded the Branch Rickey Scholarship. And I now am reading applications for the fourth year for Ohio Wesleyan. Every student in the first three years that I've admitted has gotten some merit award between $25,000 and $30,000 a year. And our overall package, including need-based aid, is over $43,000. So the average then comes in to less than $17,000 still, a lot of money, but certainly not as much as the 60,000. And I always encourage students to complete whether they feel, the family feels they're gonna qualify for need-based aid. I think that it makes sense to file the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, and we are a FAFSA only institution. So to file for need-based aid at Ohio Wesleyan, you filed the FAMSA, and that can be done now. It went live on October 1st, so that can be done now. For the merit awards that I mentioned, there is no application. You, you do not have to apply in order to be awarded a merit award. In order to get need-based aid, yes, you need to file the FAFSA. But we will award the, uh, the merit awards based on our reading, or my reading of your application. So hopefully that's, uh, that's clear. So that was also just to, to you know, kind of chime in there. I um, was a Branch Rickey Scholar when I was at Ohio Wesleyan, and that was a very nice surprise to open my acceptance letter and also have an, oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> this is included as well. So that's definitely, that was definitely nice. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Um, what else, Rebecca, can you think of other, uh, of other questions and, uh, Trying to think what else I might. Oh, I, I, I know, Eilish, uh, what I would ask uh, ask you. How about Columbus? I mean, we talked about the proximity to Columbus. What What did you do with Columbus? Um, so I did not go into Columbus as much as some other people. Um, I had a couple of friends who were from Columbus. So when I would go to Columbus, I would go to my friend's parents' house to get like home cooked meals and stuff because while the food on campus is great, you know. You always miss a home cooked meal. That will always be a thing. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was nice to, to be able to visit. 
um, friends, parents, and things. Um, but you, you, you know, there are a ton of students who. One of the best things that I I think about Ohio Wesleyan is that you do have a small school. Ohio State is right down the street in Columbus, and so if you do want any of that Big Ten rah rah like go Bucks or any you know just experience what a big school is like for the weekend it's so so easy to do that um, and so that's definitely what i what i recommend um you know columbus also does um something similar to first fridays i, I forget exactly what columbus calls them um, but you know it's an art tour um in the um you know in the art district in columbus and so it, it's a really cool place um, i actually now cover the state of ohio for work so i've since been back to Columbus several times after leaving campus, um, and I do, I enjoy it a lot. Um, residential dorms, um, so most of the dorms have changed since I was there, which is for the better. Um, so I'm gonna let Dave take that one over too. Well, I think maybe, yeah, I, let me let me answer, and maybe you can address the matter, uh, Eilish, about selecting, a, although I can address the matter of selecting a, a roommate too. You might speak to your experience, but. Um, mm -hmm. th that's another great, great qu question, Rebecca. And we, um, I've always thought that the dorms are, you know, are nice. I think when I talk to the students on campus, they think, oh yeah, they're, 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 they're pretty nice. And uh, the food, I had somebody the other day say that the food is better now, now that we have a new, uh, I think it's called Avi Fresh, you know, rather than Chartwells, but, but I, I've eaten both and I thought, I think they're both pretty good. But in, in any event, um, we currently are in the midst and kind of uh, beyond the halfway point of a uh, residential renewal, we're calling it, where we're putting $60 million into uh, our residence halls. And a big part of that is renovating Smith Hall, which is our big first year dorm. And one wing, last year, nobody was living in Smith. This year, half of the building is renovated and we have first year students living in that half and that wing and the other wing is being worked on and next year when you would be a first year student and we hope you are but when you would be a first year student at ohio wesleyan um, you would probably be living in either smith east or smith west and the newly renovated smith east or, or, uh, or smith west um, the other thing that we are doing, and the last time I was on campus, so living in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, I usually get to campus maybe six times a year, and I would have been to campus probably three times since the last time I was there, but that was February of uh, 2020, February of this year was the last time I was there. But I have not seen this, but the frame is up for our apartments that will house uh, about, I think it's 128 seniors when they are completed, and they'll be completed either late next year or early in 2022, but the framing is already up for those, and it's well underway. So it, I, I think the dorms are pretty nice, but they're going to be even, even nicer, I would say. And then we have the small living units that you may well be aware of also, which like the Citizens of the World, the uh, uh, linguistic Diversity House, the Sexuality and Gender Equality House, the Honors House, the House of Black Culture, and we, we have themed houses, a number of themed houses. And uh, first-year students, freshmen, do not live in those, but uh, upper-class students uh, do, and that, that, that may be something of interest to you at, uh, at some point, one of those themed uh, themed houses. And there are two places now on campus, you know, as far as food, where you can eat 24 seven. And you can also take your meal card and use that to go into some of the restaurants downtown. And I think the food's pretty good. But even if it's good institutionalized food, it gets kind of old after a while. So I think it's nice to be able to have a little change of pace and be able to take your meal card and uh, display it at one of the downtown restaurants have a meal there for a change of pace. So hopefully that, that does something to answer your question. Oh, and as far as, and, and I'll let Eilish talk a little bit about selecting a roommate, but um, as far as uh, that's concerned, I know I talk to students time and again, and I don't get onto Instagram, but I have an Instagram account, but I'm kind of social media challenged. I, I'm not very active in social media, but 
I don't know how many students I've heard that, you know, I met, I met so-and-so on Instagram and that's, that's my roommate or I, uh, uh, what else? Oh, Facebook, you know, certainly. But I'm hearing more Instagram, it seems, than uh, than even Facebook. But a lot, a lot of the students have met each other that way um, and, and chosen to roommate that way. Uh, you know, and, and that's in the COVID era. era. You know, it, when you have a chance to get to campus, if you come to campus for a program, sometimes students have come to campus on for programs and met their future roommate at one of those programs as well, program for admitted students generally. Mm-hmm. So I actually was one of those students that not Instagram, but met my freshman year roommate on Facebook. Um, so, you know, we had a class of 2016 group that was started and, you know, it, all admitted students were ac- accepted into the group. And so I forget exactly how it happened, um, but I reached out, maybe I reached out to my roommate, Gracie, or she reached out to me. Either way, we reached out to each other. Um, and we talked for a little bit. She was from Portland, Oregon. Um, and, you know, she was coming to the Midwest for the first time. She wanted to be, um, a, uh, she was, you know, going into our version of pre-med. Um, so, you know, we, we have a specific track that it is like pre-med. Um, and, you know, we have a lot, our, our science center is absolutely incredible. So she was pretty set on, on what she wanted to do. And she was part of the swim team. And, you know, we seem to get along pretty well. And so we decided to room together and it worked out well. Um, you know, it, we were not the best of friends, but we were good friends um, and we were great roommates. And, you know, sophomore year came around and we had both kind of found our place at school. Um, and so we each, you know, we went our separate ways, but we would get old roommate lunches all the time. Um, and, you know, we would see each other quite regularly. Um, and I, some of my sorority sisters were on the swim team. And so I would still, you know, go and support her at her meets. And it was just really nice um, to, to have that connection. And, and we still talk every now and then, um, but that was my experience. Can you address uh, the, the next question? I mean, I, I could address it, but uh, from a student perspective, I mean, I, I think it's a very safe, secure uh, campus, but uh, can you address that, uh, Eilish? Yeah, definitely. So um, I always felt safe on campus. Um, You know, we never really had an incident while I was there. Um, You know, there were a couple of times where we would get public safety announcements via email about some stuff that was happening in greater Delaware. Um, You know, that was like multiple blocks away from where we were, um, but just as a a precaution to to let us know what was going on, but nothing ever on campus. Um, You know, I all of the dorms, you you know, you have to get in using your, your swipe. Um, can't get into any of the buildings without your swipe. Um, public safety is, is always around, um, you know, students actually tend to develop a pretty good relationship with the public safety officers. Um, which I, I babysat for one of the old public safety officers a couple of times, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which is a great way to, to get some money if you're, when you're on campus babysitting for professors and public safety officers. Um, But yeah, I always felt very safe. Um, You know, the campus is very well lit. Um, You know, it's just one of those things that it's something you are always want to be aware about, but it, I don't think that it's anything, um, you know, that you wouldn't feel anywhere else. You know, you you just want to have your wits about you. It's a uh, suburban, uh, you know, urban or not suburban rural environment, and I think I think it's a very safe uh, environment. You you you'll get that good feel both in uh, you know on campus and in in, in in town. I think you'll have that that good feel. And I, of course, yeah, like like Eileen says, I mean, you want to you know take uh, appropriate precautions. Uh, you know, be be smart about you know times you're going out and you know traveling with. Uh, with company, you know, what, what early morning, late night, those types of things. But I think that's just a common sense thing. And it's not something that, you know, if you weren't that way, that you'd necessarily be at risk, but it just kind of makes sense. But it's a very comfortable, very safe environment. And I can see, uh, I can see that our five minutes or 45 minutes is almost up. Mm-hmm. Let me see here. Oh, Rebecca. You're quite welcome. Rebecca, I'm going to send you a, uh, 
a follow-up email. I don't know if it'll be tonight or tomorrow, but I'm going to send you a follow-up email. I know you already have my contact information, but I'm going to give you uh, Alicia's. I'm also going to give you uh, Billy Lewis's. He said to make sure that, that was available, even though he's not uh, on tonight. So if you want to follow up with Eilish or, uh, or Billy in any way, you certainly can. But thank you for uh, participating. And uh, Eilish, thank you so much. And uh, and uh, our uh, our host as well, uh, Miss Susan. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, we'll look forward, Rebecca, to keeping in touch. Thanks so much. Best of luck with your search, Rebecca. Yeah. So thank you to all of the New Jersey students who showed up. Rebecca, sounds like you had a really good night and made, made the night for uh, Ohio Wesleyan too. A quick survey will, when you close the window, a uh, quick survey will come up, please. Uh, find a way to answer those four little questions. And you can go to uh, www.njacac.org virtual fair and uh, find sign up for more sessions uh, and also to look at um, some of the recordings that have been made thus far. So thank you, Ohio Wesleyan, for being here with and Take care. Have a good one. Okay. Thank you. Alish, I'll be in touch. Thanks.